So as you saw there, that was our ISA and HSE with our little bit of a budget tank we decided to put together here on the Malon Battle Cruiser. In ISA, it was a bit of a primary tank. Uh, in HSE, it was more of a, a secondary tank. Uh, the ISA run that we showed there, it we had some pretty good speed. We had some pretty good DPS guys with us. So you know, the damage in was around 50% of the attacks, which you know, not bad, did its job. But I actually did another. ISA after that. Um, this is with a pug team. Um, and as you can see, it's got a little bit less DPS across the board. And, you know, so I'm not calling that out, you know, crossed out people's names. I don't want it to feel like I'm shaming or anything like that. But obviously, in pug runs, you know, you're going to get different styles of teams, some with more damage, some with less damage. This was a 6 minute and 47 second run. And in here, the same build did 30k, so about 11k less, and took in 86.48% of the attacks, uh, almost 3 million damage in, and you can see nobody on the team died in that kind of length run. That's really good, you know? You know, so this was just kind of a, a totally different parse I wanted to show here. Um, that run was, you know, a lot faster, a lot smoother. This was a little bit longer, but the build held up and worked fine in both. I mean, 30k for a budget tank, you know, it's on a tactical, so if you're doing a budget tactical build, you know, you're looking probably at 40, 50, 60k, depending on pilot, obviously, and depending on what style. For a budget tank, obviously, we're looking at taking in threat and being a little more defensive, so it's to still pull out um, 30 to 40k in that range, depending from short or long run, you know, that that's plenty, and it's good, you know, your, your tank is never going to be the one expected to be pulling the all the damage in a run. So we'll actually take a look here at the build and what we have going on. As you can see, this is upgraded to T5U. That's because I bought a Malon once, upgraded it, so I actually didn't have any control over that. Uh, it is obviously an extra console. You know, um, I know it could be a little expensive to upgrade it. It probably does help. Overall, though, the build's going to still pretty much work the same. So, you know, the mastery does help out a little, too it's giving us the resist and things like that so I do suggest that if you can you upgrade it I mean again the reason I'm using the Malon is not because I'm telling you this is the ship you want to go tank with if you have a T5U sea store uh, cruiser or a C or T6 obviously even better you know this is me just telling you this is something cheap you know they come out of the secondary ship packs right here you know you can find them on the exchange for a mil mil and a half you know, but obviously anything in the in the T6 variety of a cruiser. I love the Odysseys for tanking. You know, um, under T5, you're still, you have the Odysseys, you have the Galaxy Dread. You know, you have the regular Galaxy. There's still a few options there, absolutely. And under T6, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff. We have the T6 Odysseys. We have, you know, the command ships. Those are nice. The new Miracle Worker ships. You know, and any kind of cruisers, the Excelsior. You know the Jupiter class. You know there's there's a lot of options there. So you know we kind of went with this just to uh, to show you the basics and and what kind of ship that could actually you know take this punishment. Weapon wise, we just went with Quantum Phase and a Phaser build. You will see one gold one. That's the Trilithium Phaser. It's a mission reward. Didn't want to have to go get another. But then other than that, it's just a Omni, two Omnis obviously, a crafted one. And then a mission reward one, then just some crafted, not really good mod kind of phasers, and then the mission reward quantum phase set. Then we have console Trillium D and in science the temporally shielded data core. These are both from the temporal front mission arc. You get them out of missions. Here we have the assimilated module. And then we have Domino. This is a free console that you will hopefully all have very shortly, if not some of you have it already. That's off the Bajoran Interceptor. This is um I'd say one of the few consoles, I mean, you know, the assimilated module, a little bit of the temporal disentangement suite, but this one really is our big, only kind of real offensive buff. Um, we do then have the secondary shield projector and the disruption pulse emitter. These will run you, I, I would say, two to three mil. They're packs you could buy as a fed. What's nice, I mean, this is actually kind of the opposite of what you would normally see out of this two-piece, but it, it's at least it's a way to get this two-piece. Normally, you would see running the dynamic power redistributor and the projectile warhead, but on a fed character, that means you have to own both the prototype dreadnought and the NX. So here, this is the cheaper way to get a hold of that. Plus, for a tank, the secondary ch shield projector is helping us out. The disruption pulse emitter isn't bad for a little secondary damage. And we are getting 
that nice boost to phaser damage here. The Disentanglement Suite is also a mission reward from the Iconian arc. It's giving us crit chance and crit, crit severity based on our auxiliary power. It's also giving us some shield cap, which is not bad, some auxiliary power, and some shield resistance. Uh, and then tactical wise, just uh, two phaser relays. I actually crafted these and upgraded them, and they went ultra rare. I actually wanted them only at very rare, but again, that's not a big difference there. It's a 1.9%, I think it is, actually, difference. So, you know, not breaking the bank, not changing the build in a big way. Uh, space set-wise, we're using the new Bajoran Warp Core. I just kind of wanted to test that out. And then we're running the Soul Defense 3 piece set, which is really nice on a budget tank. Not only to heal yourself, but it, it, you know, even if you're not running, you know, a tank that's trying to heal others, even you know, if people on your team get in trouble and they're within the radius of this big heal, you know, it could help out, but also heals you in a big way. So it's a good kind of oh crap console. As you can see, the amount of hit points this is going to be affected by hull healing. So you know, it's going to differ for everybody depending on how many points they have there. We'll take a look um, skill wise I actually would probably recommend going with Psy Ultimate here. This character did have the Tac Ultimate already though so you know I wasn't gonna respect just for this but I do think the Psy Ultimate probably even makes this easier. So we're gonna take a look here at our traits, personal traits, nothing too crazy. Astrophysicist for the Drain, Beam Training. We have Context is for Kings, this is newer. Um, this is giving us damage resistance or cat 2 bonus damage depending if we've taken damage or haven't in the past few seconds. We have elusive fleet coordinator, last ditch effort, always great for a tactical. Nanite repair matrix, mission reward pickup, auto heal after you're under 50% hull. And then Im impact defense specialist and imposing presence. Impact is giving us the physical kinetic. Imposing presence is adding to our threat, which is nice. Because the way I have it set up right now, threatening stance is only giving me plus 200, and that's pretty much all I'm running to to take and taunt and get the aggro onto myself. So, take a look where we have critical systems, we have unconventional tactics, improved command frequency, and then honor dead. This one's the only one that's not free here, but very cheap. Um, we've talked about it a lot. It's giving us, you know, damage resistance. Uh, hull restoration and temporary hit points based on the amount of damage we take in. Still really nice. You can see I've only went with five starship traits, space rep traits, and active ones. The active ones, um, they are nice. I know that, you know, if we're looking at a brand new build, if you're putting a brand new character together, it takes a while before you get the active stuff. I will say for a tank, the shield generator and the deploy sensor interference platform are really helpful. Uh, space rep wise, just crit severity, crit chance, the auxiliary defense, and the auxiliary offense. So that's really nice. And then station wise, we have, you know, a commander engineering, a lieutenant engineering, a lieutenant commander psi, lieutenant attack, and ensign universal that I would attack. We have our spread for our quantum phase toward our fire at will and our tactical team. Over here we have emergency power to weapons one. Over here we have emergency power to shields. Now, this build was pretty much identical for the ISA and HSE. The way you see it here is the HSE version. The ISA version, this was emergency power to engines. And the only DOF I did have on, you can see I don't have one now because I didn't have any DOFs for HSE, but I did have the emergency con hologram on for ISA. It's in the Phoenix pack, it's easy to get, and I recommend it for everybody, so that's why. But those are really... Um, I think most of the only differences, I do think we switched science up a little. I think in science before that, I had uh, feedback pulse for ISA. Uh, it, it didn't do a lot, but it, it did a little, you know. And then this was hazard emitters, and uh, this was science team. I wanted the polarized hole and a little bit more defense here for the HSE. But other than that, I mean, we're looking at the uh, same basic build, you know. And you could tell it, you know, it did a good job. There was nothing, you know, really special. I mean, and I say the 83% of the attacks one, that's nice. 50% of the attacks with decent DPS, relatively easy, and I say. Um, and in HSE, as the secondary off tank, 30% of the attacks, I mean, the you saw the primary tank took in close to 50. I took in about 30. That leaves only 20% of the attacks 
between the three DPS guys. That's not bad. You know, that, that that's really helpful there. And if you saw in that HSE, I still was running the sole defense. I actually hit it twice in that HSE that helped keep people alive. In that, I, in that HSE, we lost one player to the queen, and the actual aggro there with the queen, especially with their feedback pulls and stuff, at that point, it's not really the tank, no matter what they're doing, it, it's not really as effective there. So, you know, that death wasn't, you know, the big part for the, the tanks is keeping them alive during the opening part where we're fighting all the tactical cubes and cubes and the spheres and our team, we made it through that pretty pretty smoothly, so that was nice. So, you know, this is just an idea of a tank on a ship that doesn't cost a lot or is hard to get with some gear that's uh, pretty much the same way. You know, we saw we have one piece of rep gear, you know, uh, the rest are mission reward and then some you know, cheaper kind of exchange pieces here. If you have any kind of these packs, you can pick them up if you ever open any kind of infinity boxes or anything. You know, so pretty kind of easy thing. Not e not easy thing to do, you know, it takes practice, things like that, but kind of a pretty easy build to work toward, nothing crazy. And then it's just a matter of doing it, you know, it's playing it a few times. Not saying it's going to be easy the first couple times, but once you keep doing it and you start to get a sense of, um, you know, what this build is about and what it's going to do, how it feels for you, you know, it gets easier and easier after that. So, if you guys haven't already, check out STO Tech Trick this week where we talk about tanking, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks, guys.